Hey, hey, welcome to episode nine of SpaceX in the News. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I can't believe I'm releasing another video already. There's so much information being pumped out there on the internet right now, and I gotta blame Elon for it. He won't stop tweeting, <laughs> which is awesome. We're going at a breakneck pace, but I've gotta love him for it because he's being transparent and he's inviting us all in on this journey of his, which is so cool of him. So we're gonna talk about Starhopper today and Starship Super Heavy. We're gonna talk about that a lot, actually. We're gonna hit up fairing recovery, which is interesting. Falcon Heavy, Dragon, the Iridium 8 launch that happened yesterday. But we're also gonna talk about flying Teslas, whatever that means. Let's get into it. Okay, before we really get into it, I just wanna quickly say I have noticed that my last couple of videos have been pretty popular, at least for me and my channel. And I just wanna say thank you guys so much for uh, being so supportive and, and loving on my channel. I really do appreciate that, you guys, so thank you. All right, so let's talk about Starhopper, or Starship Super Heavy. Let's start with Starship Super Heavy because I did get some comments that some people didn't even know what Starhopper was. So we're gonna talk about Starship Super Heavy and we'll just go from there. So really quick, Starship Super Heavy is a launch vehicle that SpaceX is building to take us back to the moon and to Mars. It's a two-stage rocket, and according to the development plans right now, it's going to be bigger than the Saturn V. Now, you may know this vehicle as BFR, or Big Falcon Rocket, but it's now called Starship and Super Heavy. The upper stage, or second stage, is called Starship, and the lower bottom stage, the first stage, is called Super Heavy. Now, Starhopper is a nickname for the test vehicle or prototype of Starship only. And this prototype test vehicle has been under construction now at Boca Chica in Texas, for at least you know several weeks to a couple months. You know, at a record pace, they've been constructing this thing piece by piece, and just this week, they finally connected all of it together. So if you remember from my last episode, SpaceX in the News episode seven, Elon kind of did a teaser or CGI pic of the Starhopper. Well, he just actually tweeted out the other day, the real Starhopper in the similar like setup as the one CGI image he tweeted out last week. Now, obviously these aren't identical twins, but man, are they close. Even the background is almost perfect. Now you can see some bumps and wrinkles on the actual shell of the Starhopper on the left there, the real one. But I mean, you gotta keep in mind, this isn't going to space. Elon tweeted out yesterday that this is for suborbital vehicle takeoff and landing tests. The orbital version is taller, has thicker skins and a smoothing curving nose section. All right, guys, so if this wasn't confirmed in your mind before, it has to be now. This thing is going to fly, no buts about it. But again, not space. This is going to do what the Grasshopper did for Falcon 9. Now, if you don't know what that is, the Grasshopper was just a test vehicle that did short little hovering hops, all right? Just to test out, you know, mechanics and thrust and all that kind of good stuff. So like I was saying, where Starhopper is in development now is they just connected all the big parts together, but now they're gonna start working on installing fuel tanks. It was asked of Elon on Twitter what kind of tanks they're using. Are they using the smaller, you know, thinner ones? Or are they going to use the actual ones that are as wide as the Starhopper itself? And Elon said they're actually body tank diameter, so about nine meters. They are going to take up the entire ship. You know, I remember reading somewhere that they're expecting this thing to, at one point, you know, fly for about six minutes in the atmosphere. And it's going to require a lot of fuel to do that. So I guess it's not that surprising. We actually have pictures of SpaceX building these bulkheads of these tanks, you know, the top or bottom portions, whatever, out there right now. So this is really coming along quickly, guys. And while this version of the Starhopper will only stay in the atmosphere, you know, it'll take maybe one meter hover hops at first and then progress that to, you know, thousands of feet. Um, but someone did ask Elon on Twitter, you know, when can we start seeing an orbital test or an orbital starship? To which Elon responded, we should see the first prototype sometime around June. Well, that's of course, if everything goes according to plan with their first version of the Starhopper. But still, that's crazy fast. I mean, is the world ending? Is there something we don't know about that has Elon with his pants on fire getting all this stuff done so quickly? You know, someone made the funny comment on one of my other videos that if we see Elon put two of every kind of animal in the starship, we should all start to panic. <laughs> the end of the world is coming apparently and Elon's the only one that knows about it. So someone else asked Elon if Starship and Super Heavy were both being developed right now. And Elon said, yeah, but the prototype for Starship or what we call Super Heavy is actually the only thing being built, but Super Heavy will start in the spring. Again, you guys, I think there's a flood coming. Rapid construction. And you know, I've been wondering ever since I found out Starship was gonna be liquid silver, if the Super Heavy would be as well. I kind of assume so. And I tried to get Elon to answer my question about it on Twitter, but he did finally answer it. And the answer is yes, rocket ship. 
So the Starship Super Heavy could look something like this when it's completed. Pretty slick, dude. Pretty slick. Okay, we're finished with Star Hopper, but let's move on to something just as interesting. Flying Teslas. So we already have known that Elon plans on putting actual cold gas thrusters in his new Tesla Roadster or whatever new car he's doing. It's going to be called like the, the, the rocket package or something. I can't remember. Oh, the SpaceX package, I think is what it was called. And it was said that they were to be used for like course correction kind of thing. You know, they'd be, they'd be strapped to the outside, you know, radially or something like that. So it could turn more sharply or maybe even to the back. And so it can accelerate quicker. And the way it's supposed to work, instead of, you know, pushing out cold nitrogen gas, they'd actually just push out compressed air that, you know, the car had sucked up into its tanks beforehand, compressed it and pushed it out. But this is something different that Elon's tweeting out now. Okay, so I don't know what to think of this. I don't know how, what you're gonna think of this because we most of us kind of thought when they first started building the Starhopper that we were just being punked. You know, it's building, being built by a, a water tower company and it looks like a water tower. But it turns out this thing's actually gonna fly. So I hesitate when I question him now. <laughs> he tweeted out this gif of this hovering, you know, back to the future looking car. And he said, this is what the Roadster will do or something like this. Okay, the car is hovering. He was the one that said flying cars is a bad idea. What is he getting at here? And you know, when someone was trying to call him out on a joke, he straight up said, he's not kidding. He will use SpaceX cold gas thrusters like he already planned to, but with high ultra pressure air and a composite overwrap pressure vessel in place of two rear seats. Okay, but here's the thing, not placed, you know, radially facing out or, you know, backwards so the car can ac actually accelerate forward. He's talking about placing them pointed down toward the road. So my question to you is, what purpose would this serve? All right, this would make the car lighter, at least momentarily, but when does having a lighter car actually benefit the driver? Because lighter vehicles do worse on slick roads. I know there's a reason for it. I just haven't made the connection yet. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. What is the purpose of having a car that can thrust downward? Okay, so now let's move on to fairing recovery. For the first time, SpaceX released some footage of an actual attempt at, you know, recovering a fairing that they tested by dropping it from a helicopter. The parachutes opened just fine, but it was really funny to me to watch Mr. Steven chase after this thing. <laughs> Mr. Steven is the name of the boat, by the way. I don't know why. I don't know why. It just cracks me up. Just, I can imagine the captain of this boat being like, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> But yeah, I thought that was really cool footage to watch. They almost caught it, almost. Maybe next time, because they did end up testing again, but I don't. they didn't release any of that footage yet. Uh, maybe they will once they actually do catch it now. This is just an ongoing, tedious process for SpaceX, I'm sure. They have attempted this several times now, and they just can't get it right. And it's kind of ironic that they're still trying to do this when they already know that Starship Super Heavy was going to ultimately be their only rocket they're gonna have. They're actually planning to phase out both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy eventually. But hey, in the meantime, it sure is entertaining. Okay, so yesterday SpaceX finally completed a two year you know, mission or journey or whatever you wanna call it, of putting 75 Iridium satellites into orbit. Now this happened over eight launches, Iridium 8 being yesterday, and all of them were successful. And all satellites, as far as I'm aware and everybody else is aware, are working. So congratulations, SpaceX and Iridium. And by the way, that first stage booster did land perfectly on the drone ship. So 2019 is starting off really well. All right, so moving on to Falcon Heavy now. We got two launches coming up here in a couple months and they're gonna be back to back. And then we have a third launch that is now under contract. So that will be happening in the second quarter sometime around April to June. So that's great for SpaceX and great for us, the viewers who get to watch this awesome rocket lift off the launch pad. And the last thing I got for you today, really quickly, is that the Dragon is going to be undocking from the International Space Station on Monday morning, about 12.10 a.m., I believe. And then that will be making its way back down to the ocean to be collected and returned to its rightful owners. So good luck, SpaceX, with that. So that concludes this episode of SpaceX in the News, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. I'll see you in the next one. Stay righteous.